Welcome back, everyone, to the Mountain Morning Show. We are covering Slam Dance, a documentary that's being featured in it, and we are joined by director Rupert Russell for the film Freedom for the Wolf. Find now, your documentary is about kind of the failing of democracy and the rise of new democracy. What does that mean? So our film started out as an investigation, actually. It was actually quite innocent. and. Uh, I'm a former academic, and so we wanted to uh, investigate what freedom means to people all over the world. So we went to five different countries around the world. And what we found was when we were talking to people about freedom, their main uh, complaints were about the democracies that they lived in. And it didn't matter whether you were talking to somebody who had uh, lived underneath an Islamist government in Tunisia, a Hindu nationalist one in India, or even Obama in the United States. This was a, a few years ago. People were complaining about the same kinds of issues, politicians not listening to them, political corruption, police brutality, restrictions on freedom of speech, and so forth. So we actually were looking at this idea of freedom, and what we ended up finding was that democracies were in crisis all over the world. And what drove you to make this documentary? I was born in the mid-1980s, and I grew up in the 1990s. And that was an era of like peace and prosperity, right? This was like we were all told that basically everything was just going to get better and better and better, and that the end of history had happened, and that democracy was spreading, and that we didn't really have a huge amount to worry about. 9-11 happened, mm -hmm. and a whole series of other unfortunate events yeah. after that in the, in the 2000s and going forward. And I think by 2014, it was kind of clear uh, to me and my producers who I was making this with that actually uh, the world maybe wasn't going in the di direction that we thought it was, and that although the idea of freedom had never been more pop popular all over the world, people didn't feel that they were actually that free. So we wanted to find out why. Is this documentary meant to just kind of show people that the issue is not only, and I feel in America we kind of have this self-centered view on ourselves as, you know, all oh, we're Americans, we're kind of like the powerhouse. Is this to show people that this is happening all over the world and do you guys kind of give a solution or is that left for the audiences to figure out? So we went to all these different countries because we were interested in looking at how uh, people had different ideas of freedom. And one of the best ways to investigate that, even if you're just looking at America, is to compare it to something else. Mm -hmm. So in order to understand how Americans feel about freedom, why not go to uh, a Muslim country like uh, Tunisia or an East Asian country uh, like like. Japan, what we end up finding was there are actually these incredible similarities that, that, that you might not expect. And so, yeah, that took us out, out of the United States. But it also, I think, helps shine, shines a lens on the United States, because we can see the same problems we've got here in other countries. And so we might want to think, oh, this is a problem with our political system, our police. It's a problem with uh, Trump uh, since 2016. But actually, these problems are much more endemic to democracies um, around the world. In terms of is, is there a solution to this, I think absolutely that there, there is. We look at protest movements all over the world. We look at free freedom struggles. We looked at the Umbrella Revolution in Hong Kong. And although that movement failed, I would watch the film and say it's quite depressing. The Umbrella Revolution didn't bring around, didn't change the Chinese government's mind to give the people of Hong Kong this great uh, li 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 liberal dem democracy. But we also end, end the film on the Women's March. And I think Women's March is as, as a case of a very successful protest movement. For sure, we were there in Washington, D.C. the day after the inauguration, and it didn't lead to you know, Donald Trump resigning, but I don't mm -hmm. think anybody thought that it would. That wasn't really the point. Yeah. What it did was it built up organizations and spaces for women that gave them a platform to then talk about all kinds of gendered issues. And I think that's really why you saw uh, the Me Too movement spring up only you know, six or nine, nine months later. If you hadn't had the women's marches, you wouldn't have had the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have this crucial pushback against sexual harassment. And I think it's interesting seeing all these protests going on and I think it's good that all these protests are going on because it's good to show, you know, your leaders or your government you have a voice and you want it to be a certain way and that you're not just going to be a sheeple for the system. <laughs> However, it is hard to change the system. Like when you talked about with Trump, how we saw all these protests, unfortunately, Trump's not going to sit there and go, you know what, guys, you're right. I was wrong. I'm going to step down because he's a powerful guy. What, what will it take to get this new democracy going? Well, as I sort of said with Women's March, I think it's sort of already happening 
it doesn't happen immediately, though, and I think that's a kind of mistake people think about uh, protest movements. You know, Martin Luther King said, uh, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. Mm -hmm. And people tend to focus on the second half of that statement. They tend to go bend towards justice. That's great. So we'll have a protest, and uh, we'll have a protest outside our city hall on some local issue, and then the next day it's going to change. That doesn't ever happen, and so people get dis disappointed and disillusioned, and they might drop out of politics. I like to focus on the first half of that sentence. The end of history is long, mm -hmm. and that's the idea the idea that this is going to take years and years and years. And it's not about changing one politician's mind or getting one policy through. It's really about changing the culture. The civil rights movement took took decades yeah. to complete. And I think that's what we really have to remember. If we're going to really renew uh, our idea of uh, liberal democracy and democratic governance, it's not going to happen overnight. This is a long-term process. And we should look, I think, to people like Martin Luther King for inspiration to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, if we don't look at our history, we are doomed to repeat it. Rupert, thank you so much for coming on The Morning Show. Thanks for having us. Where can people go to watch the film? The film is screening tonight at Slum Dance, Slam Dance in Park City at 9.30 p.m. I'll be there to do a cute Q&A at the end and happy to chat with anybody who wants to come and talk about these issues afterwards. And where can people go to follow you and keep up with you and your filmmaking? Yeah, so we can f follow the film. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and it's at Freedom for uh, the Wolf. Thank you so much, man. Thanks so much for having me. Really I wish it. we had more time. Guys, keep it tuned to Park City Television, the Mountain Morning Show. We have so much more Slam Dance coverage coming right up.